Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Just a reminder, this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to discuss your concerns. You can find my audio books, self-help books, and devotional books on Amazon. My videos are on YouTube, and you can listen to my podcast, Life Without Baggage, on your favorite platform. Today, I'm talking about control issues. This topic comes up a lot as I talk with people, and of course, it's a matter of balance, and I'm going to give you some insights today to try to understand motivations and tendencies and to help you find more balance in issues around control. So let me say, first of all, it's normal and healthy to want a certain degree of control over your life. And it doesn't make you controlling to want control over your own life or your own time or your um, affections. That that is not controlling. That's assertive. That's proactive. But we also need to think about that there are places in our lives where we probably need to exercise appropriate control whether it's in uh, responsibilities at work or responsibilities with children or employees, in taking care of our health and getting information we need, managing our finances, that we want to be proactive in our approach to life and relationships. We don't want to be passive and we don't want to be reactive. So I have a number of videos that address these issues in various forms. Mostly, these are focused on balance in relationships. But remember that there are cultures and atmospheres in businesses, in churches, in institutions, and even in governments. And so these same principles apply. But we're going to focus on control issues as it pertains to relationships. I want to mention also, which I've talked about in Understanding Yourself and Others, that we all have blind spots. So try to be open to greater insight into your motives or tendencies. We all have tendencies in a certain direction. We're all still working to find balance. But try to be open to understanding how you might be perceived by others or how maybe some things that you thought were good are actually getting in the way of your relationships. So let's look at some of those motives that can cause us to be a little bit out of balance. I've divided these into four categories. The ones that are more fear-based, the ones that are more excessive caretaking, excessive responsibility, which is somewhat similar, and then those that are more anger-based. So let's start off with the ones that are fear-based. Now, when I talk about fear-based issues with control, that can look different ways. The first would be where I would call it of relinquishing control out of fear of rejection or difficulty trusting your own motives or your own uh, decision-making power. And this goes along with the video I already have out on learned helplessness. So that would be one way of... um, being out of balance with appropriate control that's fear-based. But another one that's fear-based is that if a person has been through a lot of trauma, if their boundaries have been crossed a lot, especially early in life, whether it's emotional or physical or sexual, they may need a little more control to feel safe. They may need a little more space emotionally. They may need a little more physical space They may be a little more sensitive to conflict and require a little more time to regroup. So I don't consider that necessarily a control issue, but something that a person needs to understand about themselves and that anyone close to them needs to be sensitive to. And it can be worked on, but it's important for us to understand our own tendencies, our own legitimate needs, and then needs that may be out of balance that cross into somebody else's emotional space. So the next one I'm calling excessive caretaking. So let me describe what the excessive caretaking might be. If you grew up in a situation where you had to grow up too too fast, where you were taking care of other kids, or you had to take care of yourself 
at an earlier age than what's really good for a child. Or if a child is leaned on too heavily by a parent to take care of emotional things, to take care of tasks around the house. Uh, This can happen when there's extremely dysfunctional marriages or when someone has been physically ill for a long time or if there's uh, drug addiction or alcoholism. A lot of different things can occur where someone has to grow up too fast. And as a result, they are placed in a caretaker role way too early in life, and then they continue in that role. It's often called codependent, and there's a tendency to try to help or fix or rescue other people even when they don't want it. And that person's needs aren't met because they're focused on taking care of others. And when they don't take care of other people, They may feel guilty, they may feel fearful, but they tend to give too much in a way that really enables others. So my video on healthy personal boundaries and on relationship addiction expounds on that a little bit more. But that is one category of problems that people run into where they're out of balance in uh, taking control or trying to take control for another person's welfare. And you may be right, but it won't work. So again, if we're looking at situations or institutions or relationships where you don't have authority to plan the agenda, you're not running a classroom or a business, then we need to be mindful that when we do too much for other people, we teach them to be passive, we enable bad behavior, and it interferes with them growing up or maturing. And we need to find another focus if they don't want to grow up or mature. Again, if we're, t- we're talking about adults, not children, and not situations where you do have responsibility to set the tone and set the pace and impose appropriate consequences for a lack of cooperation from others. One of the interesting things about people is that um, my video on learned helplessness looked at a lot of these factors and how for many people they can end up with a very passive approach to life. But others respond by kind of becoming overly um, involved with addressing problems, even problems that aren't theirs to solve. So human beings have a wide variety of responses. You can see this within a family. There can be widely different responses to the same environment. So it's important to understand how you have coped with different things that were out of balance in your family growing up and then find ways to interact in a way that is more healthy and more balanced because we all have things to work on. We all have those blind spots. The next category I'm calling excessive responsibility. Now this is very similar to the excessive caretaking. There's just a few little differences. A person who feels excessive responsibility also tends to give too much. They take responsibility to help people make the decision that they think needs to be made but they don't see other people's responsibility or right to make their own decisions. So they tend to step in. They give a a lot of advice. It's very similar to the previous pattern. And they wear themselves out rather than letting other people experience consequences for decisions. Individuals who take excessive responsibility tend to have a harsh conscience. So they think everything is their fault Everything is their job to fix. It's a little more driven by a sense of duty, whereas the previous pattern that's more codependent, it's it looks more nurturing, although it's still crossing boundaries. But this is more fear that people have to make the right decision, and it's their job to make sure that it's handled the right way. So there's a lot of perfectionistic, harsh kinds of attitudes in their view of themselves usually and the video on reducing perfectionism might help a little bit with that but that I'm calling excessive responsibility but it looks a lot like the excessive caretaking and the results are often the same although with the excessive caretaking 
people might feel smothered. But with the excessive responsibility, people may perceive you as being kind of controlling or kind of judgmental, even if you're not, because you're overriding their need to make their own decisions. Even if you're right, other people have their own process, and most of us do learn by making mistakes. We unfortunately don't learn very often by reading and observing ourselves. We learn through pain, unfortunately. So you're not probably going to speed up somebody else's process, even if you're right. The last category for understanding motives connected to control, I'm calling anger. And this can be a lot of different things going on, but if a person grew up where their needs weren't met, then there can be a lot of intensity about getting people in their lives now to meet their needs the way that they want them met. And there might be a sense of entitlement about it, that you owe me to do this for me. It may be connected to using manipulation, emotional manipulation, the silent treatment, punishment. If you don't do things their way, you're going to be criticized, you're going to be rejected, you're going to be ignored or punished in some way. When it's anger-driven, the person has a hard time seeing the rights of the other person, seeing that they have responsibility to meet some of their own needs, and they don't understand healthy conflict management. They, they may have been pampered growing up where they were the favorite. So it, it can take a lot of different forms. Sometimes there's neglect or abuse. Sometimes there is pampering. And then the person enters adulthood without an understanding of the give and take. But uh, Terrence Real says that anyone who deals with chronic anger or chronic irritation needs to process underlying sadness or grief. And I find this is pretty pretty reliable way to look at things. So think about which one of those categories you tend to fit into the best. And let me give you some ideas about how to know if the uh, situation you're looking at, whether it has crossed over into something that's really unhealthy. I go into this a little bit in my video on expectations in committed relationships. But again, this can apply to institutions or organizations, churches, businesses, even governments. So some ideas about when something is really really unhealthy. It's not just uncomfortable, but it's really unhealthy. You can look up all kinds of stuff on the internet on what is emotional abuse, but I'm going to give you a couple of things that I think are critical. First of all, if information is being withheld from you that is important, that is a control or manipulative technique and it's really unhealthy. If you're punished for having your own opinion, if you're labeled for having a different view of things or criticized or love is withheld or basic respect is withheld, then this is a really unhealthy atmosphere. Healthy people want cooperation. They want give and take. So if you're in situations where you're doing a lot of the giving, you're not getting much back, then you need to kind of look at whether you're doing too much or whether the situation is very unhealthy. So I have some suggestions of how to find more balance. We can try to understand our own underlying fears, trauma, or issues that influence the style and tendencies we have. We want to accept other people's boundaries, other people's decisions, other people's opinions. They have a right to their own opinions, and if they tell us no, we need to accept that no. I find that with a lot of couples, they try to parent each other instead of being partners. And if you're giving a lot of advice to your partner, especially when it's not asked for, then you're trying to get them to live by your process. And even if you're right, that isn't how God treats us. He lets us figure things out. And we need to at least give that much respect to other adults in our lives. Again, I'm talking about situations where you don't have responsibility for a child or a department, um, things like that. So allow others to make their own mistakes. Work on your own interests, your own hobbies, or support network. 
building your own confidence. Learn how to meet your own needs in healthy ways where you don't need as much from this child or from this partner. Uh, A lot of people have these dysfunctional attachments with adult children. Work on your personal issues around helplessness, around guilt, around perfectionism. A lot of people carry irrational guilt. They feel guilty and they really haven't done anything wrong. And this drives a lot of behavior that's really off-putting to others and it's really unnecessary. So look for things like that. I have lots of videos on related to toxic guilt and shame. Attempt healthy conflict resolution. But if the other person is just about getting their their way that they're going to punish you for expressing your opinion, if you're always giving in, then that looks like something that is unhealthy in the relationship. Keep examining your expectations of yourself and of the other person. Find people who will support you in your attempt to be balanced. And people who are frequently critical need to address underlying sadness, maybe issues with self-esteem, maybe issues with dependency, relationship addiction, or entitlement. And don't expect, don't expect other people to take responsibility for your complete comfort and happiness. You may not know that you're doing that, but a lot of times this anger-driven stuff, it's there's a sense of entitlement where you are really putting another person in a corner and they can't meet your needs. They need to be authentic and it's painful, but it can, there can be change. But you have to recognize this is your issue and you need to find a way to be more balanced and relational or you will drive other people away. And I just want to incorporate um, a biblical perspective here. A lot of my clients are come out of a a faith-based worldview, which is great. That's how I am. But they have misperceptions of that faith means you take responsibility for other people's issues. You get involved in their lives and you try to correct them, even if you don't really have a relationship where they're going to trust you and accept your input. Or they've already heard your input and they're not accepting it. Jesus cautioned us to take care of the plank in our own eyes before we try to address the speck in someone else's. And in Galatians 6, it says, let let each man carry his own burden. So we want to be compassionate. We want to be involved in community and with other people. But we need to know where the boundaries are. And if we're crossing boundaries, trying to help people who don't want help or correct people who don't want corrected, then we're overstepping our bounds and we may actually be getting in the way of things that God is trying to teach the other person. So be careful when you're trying to change another person. I think the 12-step groups call it uh, clean up your own side of the street. We need to be taking care of our own issues and gently and appropriately help other people, speak the truth in love. I have videos that address using I sentences when you need to address conflict, so keep that in mind. One other comment is um, if you've tried to address things and nothing's getting better, then you can pray for the other person. I like Ephesians 1, that God would flood the eyes of their heart with light, but let God do the work. If you're in an abusive situation, then you might want to talk to a mental health professional or your doctor and see what you need to do to take care of yourself. So let me pray for you. Lord, I just thank you that you are patient with us, that you love us the way we are. I pray for each person that they would see one thing that they can do differently so that they are more in tune with how to love others, how to walk through life with a sound mind, And Lord, that we would keep looking to you to help us become the best version of ourselves that you designed us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper. Thanks for listening.